developing a plan or an outline for your paper. After writing a working thesis and reviewing the methods of development, you should be ready to organize the organization you should be ready to organize the information you have collected. Remember, organizing your research and background information before you start writing can make the drafting stage less of a hassle. Here are five strategies for effective organizing, starting with a basic list. Quick list, a brief listing of main points. Topic outline, a more formal plan including main points and essential details. Sentence outline, a formal plan including main points and essentials and essential details written as complete sentences. Writing blueprints, basic organizational strategies preferred for different forms of writing, graphic organizer, an arrangement of main points and essential details in an appropriate chart or diagram such as mind mapping. Quick lists. Though listing is the simplest of all the methods of organization, it can help you take stock of your main ideas and get a sense of what further research or planning needs to be done. There is no right or wrong way to go about listing. The key is to come up with a system that works best for you. Here are two examples that you may consider. The basic bulleted list, which briefly lists the main points you will discuss, and a T-chart, which lists the main points on one side and a, supporting, and a supporting detail on the other side. So here you have the sample uh, basic list, and then you have the sample T-chart, different ways to discuss literature. For example, if that's the topic text-centered approach, audience-centered approach, author-centered approach, and then supporting details. Topic outline. If you have a good deal of information to sort and arrange, you may want to use a topic outline for your planning. In a topic outline, you state each main point and essential detail as a word or phrase. Before you start constructing your outline, write your working thesis statement at the top of your paper to help you keep focus on the subject. Do not attempt to outline your opening and closing paragraphs unless you are specifically asked to do so. An effective topic outline is parallel in structure, meaning the main points 1, 2, and 3 and essential details A, B, and C are stated in the same way. Notice how the sample outline below uses a parallel structure, making it easy to follow. There are four main perspectives or approaches that readers can use to converse about literature. And that's a classification thesis statement, in case you forgot the, the, the previous you know, uh, video we just did on different kinds of thesis statements. So here you have four main uh, perspectives of literature. Text-centered literature, audience-centered literature, author-centered literature, or ideological-centered literature. Planning is adaptable. Some writers prefer to generate an outline before they begin writing, while others prefer to make a more detailed outline after having written a draft. In the latter strategy, an outline can serve as a tool for evaluating the logic and completeness of the paper's strategy, also known as reverse outlining. Sentence outline. A sentence outline uses complete sentences to explain the main points and essential details in the order that they were they will be covered in the main part of your essay. Such an outline can help you develop your ideas when writing the paper. Sample sentence outline. There are four main perspectives or approaches that readers can use to converse about literature. A text-centered approach and a focus is on the literary piece itself. An audience-centered literature, focus on the transaction between text and reader. An author-centered approach focuses on the origin of a text. The ideological approach applies ideas outside of literature. Working with sources. When your writing project involves sources, the planning phase will include a great deal of sorting through material. Outlining can help you organize your primary and secondary sources to best support your thesis. As you organize your research in your outline, ask these questions. Where and how should I work with primary sources? Interviews, surveys, analyses, observations, experiments, and other data I have collected. Where and how should I bring in secondary sources? 
scholarly books, journal articles, and the like. Another, way, another kind of outline is known as writing blueprints. The writing blueprints on this page lay out basic organizational strategies for different forms of writing. The blueprints may help you arrange the details of your essay or even find holes in your research. So here we're still doing the uh, classification essay uh, about approaches to conversing about uh, literature. And this is similar to a mind map. And you know, when you draw out a chart, you draw out a blueprint, it's kind of like a road map of what it is you're going to write about. This will help you visualize your paper in your head so that when you write your paper, you know what the beginning is going to say, you know what the middle will say, and you know what the ending will say. And make sure that when you write your essay, the beginning is the introduction paragraph which has a hook, five background sentences, and a thesis. Then you have a body paragraph one, two, three, and four. And then your ending is your conclusion, that your thesis statement is the last sentence of the first paragraph and the first sentence of the last paragraph. So that's why you have a funnel-looking kind of a paragraph where you start out very general and you end up very specific. So this little point here is your thesis statement. Then you start out with your thesis statement again, that's that little point here, meaning it's very specific, and then as you, 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 co you continue with your conclusion, it becomes more, um, you summarize your essay, it becomes more general. So, and then you can write a comparison. So here, here they give you different blueprints for different kinds of essays. This is for the classification essay. The classification essay is when you talk about different groups, different parts, that's like the different groups that go to UCLA, the different groups that go to Fordham College, the different groups that go to Los Angeles Pacific University. So whenever you classify something, that's a classification essay. A compare and contrast essay is when you compare two things, uh, two people, two musicians, uh, that sort of thing. You can either do the alternate method, point by point, or you could do subject by subject, which is also known as the block method, or you could do similarities and differences, also another, way, another kind of block method. And so here, comparison and contrast. Um, so here you, you could do it this way, in which you um, talk about Los Angeles is a better place to live than New York. And then you would talk about um, here, if I want to do subject by subject, let's do that one first. If I said Los Angeles is a better place to live than New York, then uh, paragraph two will be about Los Angeles, and then paragraph three would be about New York. And then here, in the beginning, you could write about similarities between Los Angeles and New York, differences between Los Angeles and New York, and then you have your ending. Here you write about Los Angeles, New York, Los Angeles, New York. That's, that's, that's the difference, okay? So you write about both. A cause and effect. So when you write a cause and effect essay, you're either going to focus on the cause or the effect. So for here, I would say the causes of World War II were cause one, cause two, cause three. And then the effect being it, it um, caused devastation in Germany. In other words, Germany got raised and had to be rebuilt. Same thing with Japan. It got raised and needed to be rebuilt. Okay? Then the effects of World War II, effect number one, effect number two, effect number three, and then the cause. And so when we write a, a um, cause and effect essay, we either focus on the causes or we focus on the effects. Problem solution essay. Problem solution essay is just like your illustrative essay where you state the problem first, then the, then the and usually you state the problem in the introduction. Okay, so those of you who are in my Los Angeles Pacific University, you would have done your problem solution essay, which was a, uh, write about a small problem you can solve. Okay, and so you state the problem in five background sentences in your introduction. Then your thesis statement would state three solutions. Three ways to mitigate homelessness in LA would be solution A, solution B, solution C. So those of you in my Los Angeles Pacific University uh, students, 
uh, are fully aware of this one. We just, we just did that for SA1. Then solution A, solution B, and solution C will be your body paragraphs. And then here, if you want to write about, um, and then if you, you're in my, that's my English 101 class. Now if you're in my English 105 uh, Los Angeles Pacific University class, then we talk about objections and rebuttal. That means a counter-argument, you can write a counter-argument paragraph talking about the other side. Then you rebut and go back to your argument about what you think, okay? And so this, this you cover, will be covered in English 105 if you're in my um, Los Angeles Pacific Universe. But it, what they mean by objections is the counter-argument. In other words, what's the other side? And then graphic organizers. If you are a visual person, you might prefer a graphic organizer when it comes to arranging your ideas for an essay or a report. Graphic organizers can help you map out ideas and illustrate relationships among them. The following organizers are related to the methods of development. Each will help you collect and organize your information. Adapt the organization as necessary to fit your particular needs or personal style. And so here, I'd say this is similar to a mind map. This is similar to mind mapping, similar to clustering. So we're still in the, um, in all of this entire video, we're still in the pre-writing stage. So both coming up with the different kinds of thesis statements, that's still pre-writing. And this whole thing about different kinds of outlines, that's still pre-writing. So we're still in the first stage of the writing process. And the writing process has three stages, pre-writing, writing, rewriting. Writing, re and so this whole first stage is about preparing the outline for your paper so that when you get to stage two, and that's writing the rough draft, then you can have a visual representation of your paper in your head. This will make writing your rough draft so much faster. So that way you don't get stuck, you don't have writer's block, and most importantly, you don't wander off your topic and start talking about something else. Nobody knows what you're talking about. So when you write your essay, you always have to make sure that your essay focuses on one idea, and then you um, support that main idea with your body paragraphs. So that's why during the first a video, I went over different kinds of thesis statements. Those are different ways in which you can state your main idea. So the main idea would be your topic, that's a bit, you know, topic plus opinion plus reasons, tour. So that, that's the thesis statement um, formula that I give my st beginning students. Of course, when you start becoming more advanced, you don't have to be so stuck to that formula. You, you, can, you can branch out, but that's a, different, that's a different lecture. So here you have um, a mind map or a uh, kind of a map of what you're going to write about. So that way it's easier for you if you're a visual learner to uh, write your paper. Another way you could have a T-chart in which you list the causes and you list the effects. Or you can have a Venn diagram in which you compare and contrast two things, okay? You put what's the same over here, and you put what's different over here, okay, for similarities and differences. This will help you visualize your paper. And for my students in Fortis College, you're going to be doing a comparison contrast essay in the second half of your class. So here are different ways in which you can write your essay if you're writing a comparison. Process analysis. A process analysis uh, essay is an essay where you tell someone step by step how to do something. So how to get rich, uh, how to cook tofu, uh, how to lose weight, how to, how to, how to. And so if I wanted to write a how to process a analysis essay, I would say, uh, the three steps to getting rich are step one, step two, step three. Then step one, step two, step three will then become your body paragraphs. And then here in your introduction, you state uh, to, to, cook a, to cook steak, you need to do step one, step two, step three. Then the same three steps that you mentioned in your thesis becomes your body paragraphs. Uh, 
And then here, problem solution, cause of the problem, parts of the problem, possible solutions, uh, future implication. And so first you write about the first you write about the problem, then you write the possible solutions. In a definition essay, you want to define a word. You want to define, for example, what the definition essay is always what is? What is love? What is freedom? What is democracy? And then, then you would have the definition, the three definitions of democracy are definition A, definition B, definition C. And then those words will become your body paragraph. And then the thing in the middle is what you're defining. So if I'm going to define what is, so this one, this middle one would say, what is love? Or what is democracy? What is, uh, what constitutes a good wife? a good husband, and that sort of thing. And then, then the definition of what is a good, so anything what is, that's a definition essay, just like anything process essay is how to essay, how to, I don't know, I can't think of a top, top, off the top of my head, how to write an essay, there you go. So that's what we're doing right now. So that's it for uh, this particular uh, video on different ways to write an outline for different kinds of essays. Okay, different, so you have your topic outline, sentence outline, and so if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Professor H writing channel, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime.